All right, Mike, who you got for your special guest? Great guest this week, uh, Clint Smith. Clint, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. Clint Smith is the president and director of Thunder Ranch, one of the nation's premier firearms training facilities for civilians and law enforcement. Clint's a Marine Corps combat veteran, a former police officer, during which he served as the head of firearms training, as well as a SWAT member and precision rifleman. Clint is a contributor to American Handgunner, American Cop, Guns and SWAT magazines, and has been published uh, in many articles nationally and internationally. Uh, he works for Thunder Ranch, which was formed in 1993. It uh, opened to show not only innovative training, but numerous range designs and functions of a type not seen before in one facility. And in 2004, Thunder Ranch was successfully moved to Oregon. You, sir, are a uh, legend and at the uh, apex of your industry, and we appreciate you so much for coming on, Clint. Not sure about the legend thing, but uh, I, I I might be an apex, <laughs> but uh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Excellent. Well, I got to tell you, so I'm going to be honest right off the top. Uh, when researching for this vi- for, for the interview here, I, I came across a video of you speaking to, I think you, I believe you were speaking to a class of students, and you said that to them uh, something along the lines of, hey, I, I don't care what you like for lunch. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to be friendly. I want to know if your rifle's zeroed. I want to know that you can load your rifle. And I thought to myself, I'd be perfectly frank, I thought, wow, what a jerk. And I turned it off. <laughs> and then I thought about it uh, for, for about a day, uh, Clint, it kind of kept ringing in my head. And I went back and watched it again, and I want you to know how, how much I really, truly appreciate how seriously you take your job and the responsibility to train people to defend their life. And I really realized after thinking about it and watching that video again, that's the point you were trying to get across, and I think you did it effectively and sincerely, and I truly appreciate that. Well, you're not the first person to say that, but... Um I have been known to be as smooth as a broken glass bottle. Uh, I have a, a job to do, and like you said, sometimes people are taken back because most people who are reasonably mature adults have never really had anyone kind of, for lack of better terminology, get in their face before. But it's very simple. I need for people to understand one thing. The school is not about shooting. The school is about thinking. But if you have to shoot, it has to be done, and you have to be able to do it right now, and there won't be a lot of time to, like you said, zero your rifle. Where did I put that magazine? So, you know, um, probably one of the best tools we can have in our house is a fire extinguisher, in a manner of speaking. But at the same time, if you ever do need the firearm, there won't be a lot of time to, hey, can I review that? You know, um, so it. It has a tendency to be a little bit edgy once in a while, especially for people who are not used to it. Uh, But uh, I have a job. I know what my job is. Uh, What we do is very serious. I try to have a reasonably good time at it. But like I said, I'm not. um, And, you know, marketing people would all have a cardiac arrest right now. I'm not actually looking for new best (laughs) friends. I'm looking for people to survive whatever encounter they may have. I, I think that's fantastic, and I think that that's important. And I think that you know people like myself who work hard for uh, you know preserving and restoring Second Amendment rights, particularly here in California, um, and activists who work hard on their free time to to do the same thing. I, I think it's a lesson learned. I think that we do need to take it that seriously because it is a civil right, and and it really is. The difference between life and death. But w- what led you to that mindset when, when you started, especially teaching civilians? What led you to, um, well, what led you to that mindset when, when teaching civilians? I guess is the question. Um, I, I think that mine is a, a longer process uh, w- without being suspectful. I've basically been using firearms for a living and or so we say because it was my job for 52 years. So it, I can't just say that one thing led to that. I would say that it's a series of things. You know, the idea that you would have um, military experience, especially in my time frame, then you realize that what it's like to have the civilian population under duress. Uh, you know, if you're not there, someone's not going to take care of them. Then being in law enforcement, um, you know, they 
they have kind of like uh, stuff today where people kind of go, well, you know, it could be civil unrest. Uh, you know, I started as a baby cop in 1970. I mean, we had the SLA that was down in your country. You know, we had the SDS. Um, you know, I mean, a lot of that stuff. Um, you know, I mean, there were a lot of different organizations, and, and rightly so. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's why they call it America. But, you know, you can't shoot up courthouses, and there's a system. You may not like it, uh, but there is a system, so you have to work with them to the system. And I think my idea was to bring that to people to sort of take away the, the private sector, to take away that sort of flippant attitude, you know, like, hey, you know, try the gun from my cold bed. Yeah, I got it. Uh, you know, uh, if he breaks my house, I can shoot him. Not necessarily. In other words, there was a lot of misnomers where people just – had sort of like, you know, mall commando kind of attitudes about stuff. And mm-hmm. I kind of thought, well, you, you screw around with this, you can go to jail for the rest of your life. And that's if you, if you survive the court thing. I mean, shooting is an issue. We know it. But the issue is going to be the legal ramifications. And then you already know based on geographics, for example, you have a certain thing that I might be able to do in San Diego County. Mm-hmm. That was one response where if I did the same thing where I live in southern Oregon, I might get a different response um, from law enforcement, especially where I'm in a much more rural area uh, where we're a lot more inclined to sort of take care of ourselves. Uh, you know what I mean? Without having to, well, I can dial 911, but I don't know that anything happens. But I don't mean it ugly. I just mean we're a long way from anything. So, so you've taught thousands of students over decades, um, pistol, rifle, shotgun. Um, what are we all doing right and what are we all doing wrong? I think we're doing right that we should understand that as far as the Second Amendment our ability to own a firearm means we're never subjected to the whims of other people without our permission. That's a good thing. Uh, what we might be doing wrong is we might be over engineering what the problem is. And then we might be over engineering what the solution is. Uh, I don't, you know, I would never be a guy to turn down spare ammo or spare magazines. Uh, but, Uh, I don't think that everybody necessarily, um, you know, needs an RPG to protect their house. Uh, It's okay if you own one. I don't care. I mean, I I got the Second Amendment. Uh, But shooting them in a neighborhood might be a little bit rowdy. You know what I mean? So um, uh, their balance, I think, is to get people to grasp that possession of a firearm does not equate to competency. And people go, well, you would be inclined to say that because you do training. I, I you not being ugly, but I think y'all, as I said in Texas, asked me to be on the show. I didn't call you and ask to be on the show. In other words, I'm not looking for a job. I have a job. I, I'm employed, you know, even in these trying times. But um, uh, so, you know, people go, well, of course you're pro-training because you train. Well, don't get training from me. Get training from somebody. Get training from somebody that addresses the issue that exists for you. And I'm not being ugly. I know a lot of them. I've dealt with them over decades. I've trained them. But you don't necessarily need a Navy SEAL, okay, to teach you how to defend yourself if you're a housewife with three kids. But you might need to have basic good good gun handling skills and have a reasonable idea of what your response would be if you ever had an issue. What about technically? Is there something that, that gun owners are technically uh, generally not doing right or technically generally uh, doing well? Is there, you know what I mean? Is there something that maybe gets practiced too much and something else that gets ignored? No, I think that, I think that uh, um, there's a, a lot of uh, uh, gaming. And, and by that, I mean that people equate three-gun competition to home defense. And so no one gets excited about this. This is what I would suggest. If you ever get an opportunity, anyone who's listening, and you can go and watch shooting, some of the best shooters that have ever come to America have come out of Southern California. Uh, you guys know that, you know, the Southwest Pistol League. I mean, uh, that, that goes back way, way, way back. So there's a lot of competency in, in that area. I mean, and uh, but I don't know, uh, and again, I say this, because I was a cop, my dad was a cop, my brother was a cop, my uncle was a cop, so I can't get in any trouble. <laughs> you don't necessarily need 
a cop to teach you how to defend yourself because there's a lot of cops, for example, that don't necessarily shoot that well. You know what I'm saying? And there are a lot of people in the military that don't shoot that well. And there are again, sure, a lot of gun owners that don't shoot that well. Um, but I don't, I think the problem is maybe overstated uh, in the, um, if you look, I always tell people, hey, don't take my word for it. Go on a computer and just research shootings, like just research shootings and look at the distance to the target. The actual problem of marksmanship is generally not that difficult in a fight. It's when you have a heart rate of 230 and you have a wet spot in your underwear and you're trying to back up and it's dark and you're moving and the target's moving and your dog is barking and your kids are crying, okay, and or in the case of law enforcement because people are like, well, they don't shoot very good. Well, you know, here's a thought. Maybe you get what you pay for. Maybe instead of complaining about how well they shoot, maybe we should put more money into, you know, training for them so that they might be better, uh, you know, uh, we spend a lot of money on airplanes to drop on, so to speak. So there's some training involved in that. Hey, Clint. Have a cat. Hey, Clint, we're going to have to pay a few bills. Let me put you on hold just for a second, and then we'll okay. bring you back because this is very interesting, and I and we're on Facebook Live, and we're getting all kinds of responses. And by the way, I'll, I'll, bet, you I'll bet you any amount of money how Michael got a little offended by your harshness. That means he wasn't in the military. (laughs) People that were in the military totally understand that mentality, don't we? Yes. Thank you, sir. We'll be right back, folks. This is Gun Sports Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. This is FM 96.1 AM 1170. The Answer. Thank you very much. Hey, folks, have you ever been to AO Sword Firearms in El Cajon? Yes, they're open, and they've got the widest selection of guns in San Diego County with over 600 unique guns in stock, including hundreds of used guns. Go see their full-service, experienced gunsmith. They can do everything from mild repairs to full custom firearms. AO Sword Firearms store located on 929 East Main Street in the city of El Cajon. Go to their website at aosword.com or just give them a call at 619-749-4867. Build, buy, or repair. A.O. Sword Firearm is your go-to place for all things firearms. That's aosword.com or give them a call at 619-749-4867. All right, hey, this segment is brought to you by the law office of John Dillon. John Dillon, if you have any legal issues that involve anything gun-related, give John a call. The red flag laws, gun registration, gun transportation, storage. If the word gun is in your question, John is the guy that can give you the answer. That's John Dillon at 760-431-9501. All right, we're going to go back to Clint Smith, president and director of Thunder Ranch in the lovely state of Oregon. Are you there, Clint? Yes, sir, I am. Thank you. So, Clint, my opinion, and I've, I've said it for years, is that the gun community makes mountains out of molehills. Um, and what I mean by that is they argue over 45 versus 9 millimeter, or ARs versus AKs, or Glocks versus 1911, or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, my, my thought is get a gun, learn it, uh, and practice with it often. Uh, stop spending so much time on these kind of these nerdy uh, arguments. Why am I right and why am I wrong? Um, well, one, you're not wrong. Uh, I can't think of any particular caliber that I would want to get shot with and haven't been shot before. I can say that. Um, I think that I would rather have someone beside me with a nine millimeter that was hitting everything they were shooting at than someone beside me with a 44 Magnum that was missing everything. So I think that, like I said, it's a deal. And I, industry wise, I'm sort of, you mentioned earlier a legend. I think the industry would consider me to be a pain in the arse uh, <laughs> because I, uh, I kind of go, uh, okay, if you go to the SHOT Show, it's an amazing show. But 97, 98% of all the stuff in that building will never be used in a fight in the next two years uh, or five years. Um, in other words, I get it. It's a marketing thing. People want to sell things. People always want to upgrade, you know, remember when we used to have black wall tires, then we needed white walls. And then, you know, now 
we got to where gas was expensive, so we all had to get rid of our muscle cars, and now they're bringing back a Hellcat. In other words, always somebody bigger, faster, stronger, more. Um, uh, it's, I guess it's a marathon. Isn't that awesome? Uh, it is. It is awesome, and amen to that. It, it just seems to me, oh, my God, and maybe it is about marketing. And part of me doesn't really fight it and isn't vocal about it because, hey, it, you know, at least they're talking about guns. At least, you know what I mean? At least the discussion's happening. Um, sure. But, oh, man, yeah. people get wrapped around the axle so easily with some of these little, you know, minute differences. Well, for example, people will be judgmental on me, you know. Uh, just a passing comment one time, a guy just sent a thing, and, you know, he goes, hey, uh, Clint, you're old. What you teach is old, and you shoot a 1911 that bolt. And so I did like you did. I waited for a day or two and thought about what was said, and then I sent a note back and go, do you ever think there's a reason that I'm this old? Um, <laughs> good, good for you. The news it is, is, you know, the – People go like, well, you like 1911s. You can never find in writing anywhere where I said, I like 1911s and everyone should own one. You cannot find that anywhere. Uh, If most people call me out of the blue and they just go, hey, I'm a new gun owner. I want to buy a gun. Uh, I understand they're, you know, uh, uh, what do you think? And I go, probably a Glock 19. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, well, that doesn't, it can't have a high capacity magazine because I'm in California. Not, not my problem. I don't live in California. You know, you're trying to get me to answer questions to your problems when your problem is not my problem. If you only can have 10 rounds in your magazine, then maybe you should practice loading. You know? <laughs> so, so, I, so along those lines, what's something that you used to teach um, and either you no longer teach or you've changed it due to advancements with technology or just experience? What's something that maybe 10, 20 years ago you, you, you taught, but now you've, you've changed it or eliminated it? And, and basically, and that's kind of a specific question, but uh, it, broader, uh, it's what's changed in the gun industry in the last 20 years? Is there something you know, in particular that you've had to modify or, or something that used to be written in stone, but now it's, it's totally changed? Something that was always as part of a doctrine because, you know, you researched it enough to know that I started teaching at Gunsight in 1980, like in Arizona. And so, uh, you know, I started my own school in 83, so 83, 93, and then Thunder Ranch in 94. So uh, to get to your question, the one thing that I tell people, I mention it, but I tell them in the physical lecture, draw a line to it, is a tactical load. Personally, I think that for most people, they should shoot if they have to until they win or until the gun goes empty. When the gun goes empty, learn how to reload the gun. And it doesn't matter whether it's a five-shot chief or a 10-shot block. Uh, so tactical loads would be something that I would say that I have eliminated. Ex- explain uh, to people what a tactical load is. A tactical load in theory is supposed to save or conserve ammunition, and I understand that. And if I was in the military and I was teaching strictly military people, I might teach them a tactical load. In other words, if they're firing and they're making enclosure on a building and they're trying to put final protective fire, in other words, we need to shoot a lot of this guy to keep him down, then I might reload and bring a magazine up the capacity before I go into this building. That would make sense. So a tactical load was supposed to save or conserve ammo. You took a partially depleted magazine out of the gun and put a fully loaded magazine back in the gun, duly noted. But the problem with it is, again, we get into the heart rate at 230, 240, 250, slippery hands. I got blood on my hands. Your fault, my fault, nobody's fault. Now the next thing you know, I'm juggling a bag of cats. And so I think you're better to just shoot the gun. It goes empty. Empty gun's not bad luck. It's only what happens after the gun goes empty. And if I practice, I push the button, old mag comes out, or cylinders, charge holes, empties, speed loader goes in, magazine goes back in, and the gun's back in the fight. Uh, you know, the, and, you know, we can come up with all kinds of statistics. You know, the average fight is this long, the average fight is this, and the average. They're not average. There's no fight that's average. Whatever idiot thought that a fight was average, okay? Now, you can have statistics, but that doesn't mean that you and I are going to fit inside that bubble. I, you know, I've seen uh, one of the things I saw were, were, were a couple of uh, statements and, and videos, and uh, where you talked about using an AR for. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, I'm kind of, you know, condensing and paraphrasing, so I don't mean to put words in your mouth or anything. But basically, the idea of using an AR for home defense, I, I think it's fantastic, and I think an AR is a fantastic home defense 
uh, platform or firearm. Um, it seems like for years that idea has kind of been poo-pooed, but it seems to be making a comeback. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it might it, to some people appear to be coming back again, but for a lot of us, it was always been that way. AR is a solid platform. It has a reasonably good magazine capacity. Even in California, it has 10 rounds. That means less manipulation. Usually those platforms are set up well to mount a light on. So in other words, I can have a weapons mounted light and or my personal opinion is to have two. Okay, so that I can do that. Most two, two, three rounds, either hollow points or soft points, if they're shot through the same mediums, like sheet rock walls, two by fours, all that, they'll go through less walls than a nine millimeter. And they, it's simple to go, how can that be? Because the velocity is the thing that makes the two, two, three work if they hit someone, but it also is what makes it tear, come apart. So think of it like a uh, Corvette, it's going through. Uh, your nine millimeter is a semi hall in steel. They're doing two different things. Uh, and you already know now, and I'll just say this so no one gets axle wrapped, as you put it. You can't put 223 SS109 green tips, which are core penetrators, for lack of better terminology, armor piercing, which I don't even think you can have them in California, but you get the point. Um, I don't want to shoot that inside. I say, well, you know, and, I, and if I lived in a. T- in a horrible home park, I'd need to be more consistent or considerate of what I was doing. I do want to say one thing here because this always comes up. Somebody goes, yeah, ARs are stupid. I use a shotgun. Really? Okay, well, here you go, lug nut. For everybody who thinks a shotgun's cool, remember that a shotgun inside your house is nothing more than a rifle because the pattern hasn't expanded enough, okay, to make it any different. Now, if you hit somebody with a load of bird shot, you know, at five yards, yes, you're really going to jack them up. But if you, you know, like, you still got to manipulate the gun. Shotguns have a limited amount of ammunition capacity. Um, and they literally, from zero to 10 yards, are a rifle because the pattern's not going to be any bigger. You, it's not like, you know, in the cowboy movies where you pull the trigger and it covers the whole side of the building. So there's, shotguns are great uh, and awesome. But if you shoot a shotgun and or a revolver, Part of your big time criteria, fifty percent of the time, should be loading the gun. So um, I, 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 I made the point not too long ago, actually, and, and a couple people made the point on the air, and a couple people reached out to me, and uh, it basically, most people train uh, with a with a pistol um, to put two shots on target, uh, basically saying that hey, a a pistol is is not as strong as a rifle. Uh, or is not the strongest uh, projectile, not the strongest firearm. It's portable, that's why we use it, but it's not, you know, the, the most powerful. So, uh, therefore, I'm, I'm not going to use a shotgun. I'm going to always, you know, for home defense, I'm going to use a pistol. My Glock holds 15 rounds. You know, a shotgun holds six or seven, you know, typically. But my point was, well, hey, if you're training that you have to pull the trigger twice to stop somebody, then you don't have 15 rounds or 16, you know, plus one in the chamber. You have eight. You know, with a shotgun, you have, you know, six, seven, eight that you don't have, you know what I mean, that have far more, you know, for lack of a better term, stopping power. It, it is, is what I'm saying, does that make sense? Am I on the right track? Am I totally off? Or what's your opinion on that? Here's my opinion. I won't say you're right or I won't say you're wrong, but I think that it's a bad idea to shoot a drill. In other words, when people shoot historically two shots or what was called a double tap or whatever fancy thing is vogue now, The problem with that is if you shoot twice and mentally you've trained that way and unplug your head because I did my drill and the person that you shot is not down. I mean, I can go on eBay and buy level two body armor, which will stop every handgun you own except for 5.7. Okay, so I don't think they should shoot drills. I think they should shoot responses. The threat that we're talking about, if we're being honest, okay, is basically a humanoid configuration. It has three places of structural armor, the pelvis, the center, and the head, okay? And the deal with it is is when you train, you should train to attack all three zones, either as they're available or as they become available. In other words, don't just run a drill. Draw a fire, too. There's when we talked about statistics earlier, right? There's documented cases of cops drawing, firing two rounds, putting the gun back in the holster. The fight's not over. They draw the gun, shoot two more, put it back in the holster. And all you got to do is research it. Don't take my word for it. So I wouldn't shoot a drill. I would shoot a series of responses, one layered over the other. That's how I would train. And I didn't say, you know, 
a 25 round magazine, so to speak. That's not, I'm saying shoot until the threat stops doing what you started doing. And I could do that. If you and I were together, I would go, okay, great. Uh, I'm going to have you shoot the center of the target because it's the biggest thing until I tell you otherwise. Um, and if you're going center, 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 and I go pelvis, okay, now you change the drill. In other words, I've changed it for you. Um, so it's, uh, you know, I wouldn't do that two round drill any more than I would do two in the chest and one in the face right. uh, as standard drill. I wouldn't do that. Well, well, is, let's be blunt. If you're drawing a pistol, a pistol is a tool of convenience. It's not a tool of effectiveness. Again, right. research it. 80% of all people shot by handguns, even multiple times, survive. I don't care if they live or die. I just don't want them to stab me. And, I, th- and that, I think that's fantastic advice. I really appreciate you coming on. I just wanted to read one more thing. Uh, this is a quote by someone named Heidi Smith, who also uh, helps you run Thunder Ranch. Our primary concern is that people who come to Thunder Ranch leave with a peace of mind in their heart and head. We strongly hope that they never have to use any of the skills or things learned here for the defense of themselves or their family. But if they do, we want this knowledge to be used confidently and with great vigor. The only goal is to win. Heidi, I think that was beautifully put. Clint, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, how do people find you? Um, they can just go uh, under ranch, uh, Inc. dot com if, thank- if they have an inclination. And thank you. You bet. Thanks, Clint. All right, Clint. Thank you a lot, and thank you for your service. We're going to take a quick break. Without someone doing something about it, it's not going to get any better.